about it. No, I have to think about it quite often. You know, always pops into your mind. All of a sudden, the woods went to this dead quiet. Robbie called me that night and said, Daddy's missing in the woods, but don't worry, we'll find him. The FBI, according to their protocol, doesn't search for missing people. So do you understand why they were there? I thought they were there to provide some sort of technological support, but I don't didn't have any contact with them myself. Hmm. Have you ever had them on a search that you've done? No. We did find the pelvis partially buried, a thin jacket. Any there pants? Were... Pants? No. Socks? No, because we didn't find any feet. No feet? Right. This all doesn't add up to me. Nope. No. It just, none of it makes any sense. For a while, I've been extremely interested in missing 411 cases. Some of these cases goes back to the 1800s. At least those were the earliest documented. So for this video, I wanted to cover some of these missing 411 cases. When you think of missing 411 cases, you can't help but think of David Politis. Former police detective David Politis, who turned investigator and writer, who was known for his missing 411 books, where he investigates the disappearances of people, specifically in national parks. What makes these cases he researches so mysterious is that people just disappear without a trace. Search dogs cannot detect a scent. A lot of times the missing person's shoes are found and either the missing person is found in an area that was previously searched or their remains are found in a previous search spot. David lists these characteristics that makes a missing person case connect with a missing 411 case. Point of separation. If the person is with someone and decides to separate from the group. Time of disappearance. Boulder fields. Um, if there's near water. A weather event, um, which happens close to or after the disappearance, disability or illness of the missing person. Canines can't detect the scent when searching for a missing person. Um, the missing person is found in an area that was previously searched or if the missing person has missing clothing or if the cause of death is unknown for the missing person and the geographical listing meaning if it was in what they would deem as a cluster area where other disappearances has happened. So these missing 411 cases piqued my interest and many others due to the fact that there's no explanation or logic that can explain why people are vanishing in national forests or urban areas. Now last year, David Politis second movie missing 411 the hunted came out and the movie details some cases of hunters who disappeared from north american wildlands for hundreds of years without a trace now one of the disappearances in the movie is the disappearance of aaron hedges aaron hedges was a 38 year old hunter from bozeman montana who went elk hunting in the Crazy Mountains in Montana in early September 2014 with his two friends, Greg Leitner of Idaho and Joe DePew of Bozeman. The friends began their planned week-long trip at the Cottonwood Lake Trailhead on Thursday, September 3rd of 2014, around 20 miles north of the town of Billings in Montana. Aaron carried the bow and arrows as well as a handgun in his pack. His friends were armed with rifles. They intended to base themselves around Campfire Lake and the group had two horses and a mule. Aaron was last heard from on September 5th 
of 2014. His remains were located two years later in 2017, 15 miles from his original destination. On September 5, 2014, at 10 a.m., Aaron decided to head up towards Sun Lake Lake to try and replace his lost sleeping bag that he lost when his mule was spooked and threw Aaron's supply kit and sleeping bag. His plan was to seek shelter where they had a hunting camp the previous year and where the group had placed a cache, including a spare sleeping bag. Greg and Joe told Aaron he needed to come back into camp as the area is isolated and dangerous at night. He explained he was going to grab the supplies and return to his friends that evening. His friends called him at 4 p.m. on their Garmin walkie-talkie and the equipment showed their GPS positions on the screen. The GPS position of Aaron was on the very edge of the screen as he had missed the fork in the trail towards the lake and was instead walking north for some reason. That was the last time that the group heard from Aaron. On September 6, his friends realized Aaron was definitely missing when he failed to return to the camp and then a snowstorm came in on September 7th with 18 to 24 inches of snow and the temperature falling dramatically from 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Aaron wasn't reported missing until his wife Christine reported him missing on September 8th after Aaron friends called her. By the time the official search had started, the bad weather which hit the area on September 7th hindered efforts to find Aaron. Search and rescue teams focused their efforts on the area that stretches from the Cottonwood Lake Trail to Trespass Creek. 20 dog teams, 7 horse teams, 59 ground searchers, and National Guard and private helicopters equipped with night vision equipment and spotlights eventually joined the effort. Aaron's boots were found on Wednesday, September 9, 2014, the second day of the search way east of Sun Lake Lake, close to the creek and falls. Close by was a camelback water bladder and just off trail was a fire pit with a partially burnt cigarette pack, a fire bundle, two waist belts from a backpack which had been cut off were also located, but despite an extensive search, nothing else. The tube connected to the bladder had been removed, causing searchers to believe that Aaron had tried to drink water. Puzzlingly, the searchers were in the same spot a day or two before, but didn't come across the items. It was strange that Aaron would remove his boots in the snow and cold weather. David Politis, who has done extensive research regarding missing, the missing in National Forest, um, says that the distance covered without boots in fairly deep snow and freezing temperatures is humanly impossible. It's 13 miles from Sweetgrass Creek to the Rain Ranch where the boots were found. So David also says that in these many cases, he and his team has researched that the missing when the shoes are removed or boots, that this happens in many of the missing 411 cases. That's one of the qualifiers to deem it a missing 411 case is that shoes or boots are removed. Also, search dogs cannot pick up the scent, as well as the other characteristics that I spoke of earlier in the video. Now, the following summer, on June 22nd, 2015, and around nine months after the disappearance, a butcher from Powell, Wyoming, came across Aaron Baloney's where visitors, where he was visiting relatives, I'm sorry, at the Rain Anchor Ranch in Sweetgrass County. On August 8th of 2016, near the Sweetgrass Ranch, some guests found a skull underneath a dead tree. Now, investigators found a Samsung cell phone on Aaron's body and was initially hopeful to recover data from it to gather further insight into his death. But it was found to be corroded beyond repair due to being exposed to the elements for two years.
The second case in the movie that I wanted to talk about was Audrey Kaplan. Audrey Kaplan was a 75-year-old Dallas, Texas native. She spent part of her summers in Santa Fe, New Mexico with her husband, Norman. On the day of her disappearance, July 30th, 2014, Audrey and her husband, Norman, were searching for mushrooms along the Windsor Trail in the Santa Fe National Forest. A friend of Audrey said that Audrey loved hiking in search of edible mushrooms was her passion. She just loved to hike and pick mushrooms. That was her thing every summer and she especially liked to go way up high. Now, during Audrey and her husband's Norman time on the trail that day, um, July 30th of 2014, Audrey separated from her husband it's not stated what happened that caused the separation. She was never seen again after that. Now, up to 80 volunteer searchers were involved in looking for Audrey and were assisted by state police and New Mexico National Guard helicopters and search dogs. Now, a week later, Audrey remains were found approximately 1.2 miles from where she was last seen. And that's another thing that David Politis points out as well in his missing 411 cases that deems it a missing 411 case is that many times when remains are found, they're found in locations that were previously, previously searched and many a times were searched more than once, several times, and there was nothing. And then some time later, someone finds the remains or comes upon them, and that area was already searched extensively. So in Audrey's case, she was also found with no clothing on in a fetal position. And so that is weird as well, because sometimes, many times in the 411 cases, which deems it a 411 case, is that many times the people are half dressed or not dressed at all or if they're dressed their clothing is on backwards and many times that's with the children their clothes are on backwards or not put on the way they were when they initially got up that morning and went out so that's another weird thing that ha makes these um, 411 cases very strange like I try not to get too much into the paranormal or into issues of that nature but i'm sorry in some of these cases you can't help but think that something not of this world is happening either there's some kind of portal into another dimension or there's some kind of um, entity that's doing this i know in a couple of cases there were reports where people had saw a um, hairy man looking entity and um, that was the same day of a couple of disappearances and again I will get more into those stories as I go along but um, definitely with that being said it makes you think is that the case is there something that's out of our realm out of our understanding far as you know something of that nature a Bigfoot or some kind of um, alien entity or something of that nature you know it is not scientific you can't it's not tangible because you don't have concrete evidence to prove but in these cases there's no way that concrete evidence is ever going to be proven because of the abnormality of it so that's my opinion of the situation but again, like I said, it's definitely something that I will continue to explore. Mm -hmm.